this is CSF 4203, week three, chapter, data, chapter six, data link, control and multiplexing. Very important chapter. Data link control module. Okay, we remember we talked about uh, the, the TCP IP layers and OSI layer. We talked about the physical layer, data link layer. Okay. Now we know that physical interface standards provide a means by which a stream of data can be transmitted synchronous or asynchronous. Asynchronous and access synchronous. I think you studied this in your uh, cryptography course, had to synchronous or asynchronous, private keys. Or... Okay. But it's not doing the flow control and error control. The data link layer, the data link control will provide the error, the uh, flow control and error control. Okay. And these protocols are used for synchronous transmission. So here we have the data link layer on each side, transmitter and receiver. We have the transmission link, the cable, yani, media. This is the data, and these are some control bits. These control bits will be used to control the flow. They, uh, OK to organize the data flow. We call these control bits and the control bits are added by the sender. As you can see, there are header and trailer. Flow control, what is, uh, why is it needed? Why need to why why we need to do flow control between the sender and receiver? Because maybe the sender is very fast, and the receiver is slow, so that the receiver is not overwhelmed by the frames that are coming. Okay. So when the data is being fa sent faster than the receiver, okay. Also, we need it to make sure that. Uh, the, the, that the transmitting entity does not overwhelm the receiving entity, okay? And also prevents buffers from overflowing. I shall make them in end of that. All right? One of the primary functions performed at the data link layer of the OSI. This is all done at the, the data link layer frame. We know that frames are at data link layer. So this is why we need flow control. And this flow control is done at which layer? Very good. Error control. We have two types of error control. Lost frame, the frame is lost, or damaged frame. The frame arrived, but it has noise. It's damaged. OK? And we have a technique called ARQ to handle these cases. And what does ARQ do? It will do error detection. Detection. It will do positive acknowledgement. If everything is OK, OK, I have received it. It will read transmission after timeout. It will do negative acknowledgement and retransmission. OK, this is all done through the ARQ technique. Question. If a, if, if a frame is lost, what is the action that is done by the network? Retransmit. Retransmit. Okay. Now we will start talking about multiplexing. What is the motivation for multiplexing? Let me explain it to you easy. Let's say here we have in one side, we have, let's say, 20 users and we have a link that is bandwidth let's say maybe 512 megabits per second or one gig 
So we can multiplex all the sender traffic into one link. Why we need to buy for each one, right? especially for one. All right. So multiplexing is more needed nowadays because the higher the data rate, the more cost effective the transmission facility. Because I'm already pay, paying for this high speed, high bandwidth. Let me multiplex multiple senders on the same media. Understood? It will save on money, save on equipment. Okay. And most of the data, most of the devices, they don't need yani, that much speed all the time. So these are all motivation for multiplexing. How can I mute this? Sorry, show me. All right, any question? So here we have multiplexing. N input, the max is here. This is the, the link divided into channels. D max, D multiplexer. By the way, multiplexer, D multiplexer. Multiplexer at the sender side, D multiplexer at the. Okay. We have two techniques discussed here to do the multiplexing. Either I will to do frequency division multiplexing, which is very simple. I will divide the channel into frequencies. Let's say I have 10 megahertz. Two, I will divide it, let's say, for example, into five channels. Each channel is two megahertz, and I will give this channel to each sender. So with one, with one link or one channel, I divide it into five, and I am serving five senders. But what is the problem with this? Speed will be slower. Okay. The other method, so this one is called FDM, frequency division multiplexing. The second method is called time division multiplexing. Here, what I will do, I will divide it into time channels. So the first sender will transmit, let's say, for the first, for example, for the first second. Then the second uh, will send, transmit for another second. But he will utilize the full channel. So which one? This is very fast, huh? Okay. So this one is called TDM, time division multiplexing. Okay? Any question about this? It's always coming in the exam, by the way. This is the video. Only two minutes.
Okay? That's why we call it time dividend multiplex. Alas? If you understand it, it's easy to describe it. Okay, any questions? So we have seen the video. Now FDM of voice and TV signals. Frequency division multiplexing was the mainstay of telephone transmission for many years. It was used. Okay. Although now the use of FDM is declining, but it's declining, but it's still there. By the way, before they were only using mainly FDM. Okay. Especially they use it for television distribution systems. The analog television signal fits comfortably in a 6 megahertz bandwidth. We already talked about this in the first chapter. Okay. Video television is 6 megahertz. Given the enormous bandwidth of coaxial cable, coax, I think the coax cable, not the uh, cat5, other cat5, the coax is available. I am all can feel receiver, ah, receiver, yeah, 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 coax, yeah, exactly, there is a, thing. okay, have you seen the coax cable? Okay, given, okay, so, if, it, because it has like 500 megahertz bandwidth, you can put multiple TV channels or signals using the FDM. Right. One good example of FDM is ADSL. Okay. ADSL uses frequency division multiplexing. Okay, to exploit the one megahertz capacity of the twisted pair. Okay. ADSL is it symmetric or asymmetric? Why? Because the download speed is different than upload. ADSL diamond it download faster, so huh? they don't give you upload same speed, correct? All right. So we call it a downstream or a download or upstream, upload. So ADSL is good using FDM and it's a perfect fit for internet access. Now this is another drawing for time division multiple multiplexing. So here I have different sources. Each one has input. 64 kilobits per second and then it comes to the multiplexer so you look here how it is described very nice i like this diagram so source number three is transmitting using full speed then source number two transmitting full speed then source number one transmitting full speed and then we start again so the beauty about this method is when they transmit they are using the full speed the full capacity Okay, so it's good for internet browsing, right? For internet, it's good. So here we have the TDM frame, and this is the N, is the time slot. Digital carrier systems. I oh, know it's not clear here, I hope. Okay, can you read it? I think on your computer, it, you can read it on your PowerPoint. 
You can, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So digital carrier systems, these are the long distance carrier system. Uh, it was designed to transmit voice over high capacity transmission links, such as optical fiber or fiber optic, coax cable and microwave. Okay. And evolution of these networks to a digital involved adaption of synchronous TDM transmission structure. Okay, so to adapt them to digital, they use the TDM. So TDM is used for digital carrier system. FDM is used for ADSL, ADSL, just now. Here, ADSL. These are good, important examples, okay? Now we talk about the cellular and cordless telephone systems. These are the different technologies. This is the history. So they started with FDMA, Frequency Division Multiple Access. Here, the radio spectrum used to connect mobile devices and cell towers is divided into separate frequency channels, each capable of carrying one call. Then they used also frequency division duplexing. Here we have two distinct frequency bands, one band for uplink and another band for downlink. The third technology, these approaches are being replaced by a time division multiple access TDMA and code division multiple access CDMA in cellular networks. That's why uh, in the old days, maybe you don't, I think you don't remember this, but in the old days, if you buy a phone like from, let's say, from the States and then you bring it to another country, it will not work because it's different technology. But nowadays with these smartphones, they will work any country. Okay. So here we had three technologies, FDMA, FDD, and TDMA, and CDMA. Okay. Now this is the summary. Please read the summary. Any questions? Yeah. What is the error control mechanism used in frame radio? What did we call it? Easy marks. Come on. We'll stop here.